Well, Africa Connected with Santa Bank gives you trusted insights into the endless potential of Africa's markets. And Lika Sumba is back from Ethiopia. She was there. Um, her journey has been chronicled on africaconnected.co.za and also the hashtag Africa Connected on social media. In studio to give us a recap of probably your, you were the, like the biggest smile you've had since coming yeah. back from any of these trips. You love them all, but your smile's bigger on this one, I think. Yeah, I think Ethiopia was really special, you know. Um, before I went to Ethiopia, because it was my first time going there, I had a lot of ideas about what it was going to be like. And then I got there and I found that it's really multi-layered as a society. It's really multi-layered in terms of the things that are happening across the board. And just, you know, you, you get to really to, to really get to see a country that is developing really fast, but a country that's still really connected to its roots, you know. And with that, you see the challenges, but you also see all the opportunities. And I think, for me, one of the things that I remember when I left Ethiopia that really sat close with me is the fact that in Ethiopia, the DNA of everything that people do from business to just, you know, the schools that we went to, everything is about service. You know, it's about service first. How can I serve my country? How can I serve my community? Tell me about the meeting you had with our ambassador in so, Ethiopia. So our ambassador has one of the most fascinating roles. Um, he basically is not only the, the ambassador to Ethiopia, he's also the ambassador to the um, African Union, ambassador to Djibouti, and ambassador to UNECA, right, for South Africa. And he really um, spoke a lot about what was going on because in order to understand Ethiopia, you have to understand the greater region. And we asked him about what he thought about the free trade um, agreement in South Africa being involved and he really spoke about the importance about this free trade agreement and how it is that we we as Africans would speak with one voice. For the continent I think it's also very important for us as Africans that for the first time we are going to be what we have taken a giant to, a giant step towards uh, economic unification if you know integration if you know, if you know what I mean. Imagine we, we've got the African Union imagine we've got the the, 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 the free trade area, the African free trade area, and we've got all of those. What will stop us as Africa from speaking with one voice? Nothing. That's the ambassador in Dumiso and Chinga. Uh, you also then met up with Ethiopian Airlines. Yeah, Ethiopian Airways is impressive. And you know, when they talk about the war on the skies of Africa, they're talking about the fact that for them, I think a few years ago, they did some research that came about and it said that 80% of people who fly within Africa are using international carriers. So for the Ethiopian um, Airlines, when we spoke to the chief of, of, of operations, he literally said that, look, every time an airline goes down in Africa, it doesn't look good for us because they like to partner with them. So that's their premise for working and that's basically how you see with Ethiopia everything is about service it's about community and neighbors so that's what they deal with firsthand you know but what he also spoke about was you know he spoke very clearly about how one of the first um, trips that they had made um, to Nigeria was after Nigeria had had gained their independence basically and so that's how they planned their travel routes pretty much initially and then he spoke a little bit um, about how you know then I asked him you know how they deal with government versus business and how it is that they, they're able to manage it because that seems to be the problem with quite a few of the carriers around the continent and here's what he had to say the government doesn't interfere in management mm -hmm. it's owned fully owned by government but managed privately our management we are free there is a board we report to the board like any board we, we, we submit our plans get it approved then we do our business. Then we report the result. That's Terwalde Gebre Mariam. Uh, he's the Ethiopian Airlines Chief Operating Officer. We can't talk about Ethiopia without talking about coffee. You look like you're still slightly wired. Your eyes are still, you haven't closed them <laughs> since you've returned. Was the coffee great? The coffee was the best coffee I've ever had. And I'm literally a coffee the connoisseur. Um, uh, they're actually right on my kitchen table. I literally will have them delivered. I literally will. Bruce, I know I owe you so many things, Kente Fabric, everything, but I've got friends in high places now. But <laughs> <laughs> so I'll make it happen. But nonetheless, I think firstly, the interesting thing about coffee is that um, coffee was actually discovered. In, remember, we had discussed the story about the sheep and all of that. So the area where coffee was discovered in Ethiopia, I'll have to spell it out because in South African context, it might come out wrong, is K-A-F-F-A. -F -F that was the area, the name of it. So <laughs> that's where it was found. Um, and so basically, that's where the name coffee comes from, from that area directly. So we got to speak to somebody who I think is really phenomenal. His name is Aman Adenu, who's the CEO of Matad. And basically, he actually
actually grew up in the States. Um, he was there for like about 26 years. His family was really impacted quite a lot. And he went back to Ethiopia and he spoke to us a bit about a bit about how big it is that the coffee industry really is and how many people it affects in Ethiopia. You know, coffee in Ethiopia uh, affects over 20 million people. So, over 100 and something. Yeah. That's yeah, 20 plus million uh, directly or indirectly uh, impacted by coffee. Um, and coffee is still number one. It used to be around 60%. I think it went down to 35, 35, 40% of our uh, export, uh, foreign currency. That still shows you still number one, still uh, 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 contributing a great deal. A critical crop for uh, Ethiopia and a critical crop for the rest of us as well. Thank you, Ethiopia, for coffee. Aman Adenu, the chief executive of a distributor of coffee in Ethiopia of Metad. And that's Lika Sumba with Africa Connected. (laughs) 